Raiders app from Sony that just came out with the a7 IV. It's pretty awesome. Um, so it connects really fast from the camera to the phone and I got a picture going on. I can change the settings, monitor what I got, the lighting and everything, bring some of this down, which I need to do right now. Right there. We'll see how that looks like. All right guys, welcome back to the channel. Scott's from Scott's Reviews. I have a problem with these ZV cameras and hopefully this next week or two that I go on my trip, hopefully will solve some of the problems that I have. But let's get into this video. This will be a two part video. This is part one. Part two will come in a couple of weeks after the end of my vacation to give you a better idea of what my thoughts are on these cameras for vacation style of photography and video. So, all right, where do we begin? Well, I apologize for the opening, for the typical YouTube coffee style opening. Uh, I know it's cliche, but I wanted to show you the video of the ZV-1F and the lighting was just whatever. When I woke up this morning, I grabbed a couple of quick shots of 120p and that's what I threw together at the opening. So if you like it, don't like it, it's just to show you what the camera can do in a very quick type of video. So what did I just do? How did I get here? So this all started with the um, Ricoh GR3, uh, a pocket sized camera. The whole idea was not to take a big camera with me on my trip to limit some of the gear that I was taking with me and not pack all the lenses that go along with the a7 IV. I was just gonna bring the ZV-E10 and one or two lenses. But then I thought about what if I want to walk around for a pocket size to get good pictures and not just use my phone. That's what I thought about the GR3. Um, you can watch my video on that of why I'm returning it, but uh, check out that video if you want to know all about that camera. Good camera for photography, nothing for video, uh, but it wasn't just enough for the price. So after I returned that, I was in the mood for a point and shoot again. And I've had both of these cameras before. Years ago, I had a ZV-1 with a bunch of RX cameras too. And then later on, I tested out this camera when it was first released, the ZV-1F. And I have lots of thoughts on this guy here. If you like deals and you want to know how I, what deals I got, I got the ZV-1F for 400 bucks at B&H shipped to me. That's what it cost. Uh, and it's in great shape. The ZV-1 just recently picked up off eBay for $420 plus the Sony Bluetooth grip, tripod grip, which is coming in the mail tomorrow, hopefully. That's a great deal. So why did I get them both? Uh, well, I couldn't decide between the two is basically what the problem is. Uh, there were a lot of thoughts about the ZV-1F, what, how, how we could use it on the trip. And then there was also thoughts about how the ZV-1 would be better because of the zoom lens, everything that goes along with this camera. Let's talk about photography first. Uh, you saw in the opening, uh, I did a couple of shots just to show you some examples. And my initial impression with the ZV-1F was, since it didn't have raw photos, this is not a photo camera. Which is somewhat true, but after playing with the JPEGs out of here and getting the shots that I would normally catch on vacation, these are good photos. I mean, they have the new color science, the white balance is very, very good. Um, I do love the pictures. Now, if I crop into them, no sir. But the 20 millimeter shot that comes out of the camera is very good. I like it. I like the colors. I do like also the new film looks they put in this camera. I much like the FL. That's my favorite of the group. Those film looks don't come in the ZV-1 or, or ZV-E10 at all. So this new camera has that those looks. I kind of put this one past for photography and then now I'm revisiting that subject again and I'm starting to like the JPEG is coming out of here. Would I prefer to have raw in here? Absolutely, I would prefer to have the raw. For the type of photos you, you're going to grab from these cameras, they're going to be good. They're going to be, a, if you put them on your phone, great. If you put them on uh, social media, they're going to be great. Uh, if you blow them up in a big book, not as good as these other cameras that, that they can do. But it won't be bad if you keep it kind of small. So with the new color science on this guy, uh, the colors are coming out, I think, especially the white balance. The whites look a lot better. 
these tend to have to me from the photos I got recently a little more of a warmer tone you can bring that down but I still couldn't get it to match exactly what the ZV-1F did so if you're just looking to have quick shots with a 20 millimeter focal length you're good to go with that then these are fine for quick photos it's built more for video but it's fine for quick photos the ZV-1F has that zoom lens which is really needed on vacation when you're at spots where you can't go to certain places, you try to get the, get the shot. If you're too far away from the Magic Kingdom, you try to get a better photo of it. Uh, this will be horrible that, of those kind of shots where you got the Magic Kingdom in the background and all the people around. You want to get a little closer. This is basically you stuck with 20 millimeters at, at that point. This gives you options of getting closer, zooming in, zooming out, all that kind of stuff. A typical zoom camera. That's why you buy a zoom camera. Now the ZV-E10 is going to give you better photos Plus, you can change the lenses out here, right? So this is the this is the 11 millimeter 1.8, which is money for this camera right here, especially when it comes to vlogging style of videos, that kind of thing. Awesome lens. I'm also going to bring the 55 1.8 for this camera to get more of those uh, portrait style of shots. My plan for the trip down to Disney and the cruise boat is that this camera will be used to get the Photos that you're going to go grab. You know you're going to take pictures. You want the best pictures you can get. This camera's coming with me. Probably with the 55 on it. This one is more that video, quick video. When I know I'll be doing more video than picture. And if I grab a picture, most most times it's going to be in close quarters. So that 20 millimeter will be fine on a cruise boat for those tight shots. Again, which one's better for photography? Of course, this guy is all day long. I will get the ZV-1 next, and then the ZV-F, 1F. I, I ranked this higher than I initially thought it would do. The JPEG is coming out of here are decent, good quality pictures that rival these three. Basically what I'm saying is that when you punch into that picture, good bright sunshine, a well-lit environment, you're going to be like pixel peeping to tell which one is which. If I scrambled them all around, you probably couldn't tell right away which JPEG it was. Now, when it comes to a photo that you want to enhance and bring up, bring up some of the highlights more, that's when the raw comes involved and you'll want the raw photo. I do want to talk about what is awesome about the ZV-1F and the screen on the back. So this is what makes this camera up to me one you hard to put down. If I gave you these three cameras to go play with, for fun, you're going to pick up the ZV-1F after a while and say this is a lot more fun to play with because of the screen on the back. All touch screen, it has pretty much your fun, your FN menu system of icons on the back here so you can easily change things on the go. You can pop your zoom, you can pop in, pop out uh, as you film. You have your shutter button on the screen, you have your record button on the screen, so you can treat it like a almost a cell phone where you walk around. If you want to film like this, you can walk around, take a photo, pop the video going. So the younger generation is going to like this more because you're dealing with a screen and you can zoom in, zoom out, all that kind of stuff as you view your picture. I cannot wait for the ZV-2 when they throw this screen into this camera with the new color science and everything, the ZV-2 is going to be an awesome little camera if they come out with it. Yeah, I'm excited about that one. Of course, uh, the 20 millimeter focal length is better for this vlogging style of shots versus the 24, no doubt. Everyone knows that. Everyone has come out and they buy their own little lenses to put on here to widen out the view. That's why they came out with this camera pretty much. I did buy uh, this ND filter, variable ND filter, to screw right on here. Whoops, starting to record. This is fun to do because you can then put it on manual. Uh, you can get all your settings in on the back as you want. Double the frame rate, get your 2.0 aperture, make sure your ISO is completely down, and then you can dial it in using your zebras to get the great exposure. Make sure your zebras are pretty much not all the way gone, but mostly gone the best you can. And then leave it and then start recording all that stuff and you have great settings. That way you don't have to worry about things moving around on you. 
that's what's fun about this little indie filter on this on the ZV-1F. So, do I have a problem? Absolutely. I think um, I, I came up. Let me get my phone back out. Scott's reviews I think should now stand for small camera obsession therapy training because. I do have a small camera problem. You don't think? All right, listen to this. This is what's coming with me on the trip. Ready? ZV-1, ZV-1F, ZV-E10. Right. I'm not gonna keep them all forever, but that's what I have coming on the trip. Also have the GoPro Hero 11, DJI Action 2, Insta360 X3, and a Sony RX0 Mark II. That is ridiculous. If I wasn't for this YouTube thing, that would even be more ridiculous. I blame a lot of things on this YouTube thing. So whether it's dumb, smart, I don't care. It's fun. I enjoy it. Oh, one more thing. Um, when it comes to microphones, what's great about the ZV-1 and the ZV-E10 is that I can connect this thing with the hot shoe right on top. Boom. There you go. Boom. I can remove this off. Connect this here and use this as I walk around and get good audio. With this, I have to do the old plug-in. I have to plug the camera in on the side here. It can be done, but you need the cord with you. So it's a lot more convenient to have the hot shoe on top with the ZV-1. That is a definite. One difference I didn't notice with the ZV-1F versus these two, when it comes to the drive mode, um, these have a drive mode called uh, continuous shooting, high-low. Uh, this thing is fast. 24, 24 frames per second, it just motors. You want to hear it? This one has a different drive mode. They, when you first set it up, the first one below single is continuous shooting, and it sounds like this. No, that's not what you want. So I thought, was like, oh man, they even took out the fast shooting on this thing. The one below that has an S in the box, which stands for speed priority shooting, which sounds like this. Better. Now the question is, which I don't know, why I will display on the screen right here. Are those photos less megapixels than the continuous shooting ones? Are we cutting down on the number of quality of photos to get continuous fast bursts like that. Okay, couple of weeks I'll put the video out after I get back from the cruise and I will give you my thoughts and opinion. I'll do video, I will do photos, I'll let you kind of guess on which photo is which and I'll give you my final thoughts on what is the best vacation camera. And the only way to find out right there is to subscribe, like, and hit the bell so you'll be notified of when that video comes out. Thanks for watching and you guys have a great rest of your day.